Welcome to Bug Me Not, Big Talks for Kids. My name is Tatiana and I'm so happy you're here. And before we talk about sports, I want to take a moment and ask you some questions. First of all, how are you? How is everything lately? Are you enjoying the episodes? Which one is your favorite? Is there anything specific that you want me to talk about? Remember, this is our podcast. And I hope you know how much I appreciate you. And mostly, how much I love hearing from you. This is episode number six. And it's all about sports. Do you like sports? I mean any kind of sport. I have taken so many different classes and I absolutely love sports. But you know what? It wasn't always like this. Well, I really hope that by now, you have noticed that I have a big personality. And that means that I'm very sociable. I love talking to people. And also, I'm not afraid to speak my mind, share my opinions, ideas, and feelings. And since you can see me, let me tell you something. This big personality is held in a quite small body. Isn't it interesting? So growing up, because I wasn't tall, whenever kids would gather to play games, I was always the last one picked for teams. And that was not fun. I felt so bad, so I started to not like sports at all. Then, My heart said to my mind, we are not going to do sports. And my brain, my mind, truly believed it. Wow, how powerful are our hearts. And every time the kids would get together to play soccer or volleyball at school or in my neighborhood, I would just make excuses or create a whole new game that would not involve sports. Sometimes I had friends joining me, but sometimes I would rather be by myself than going through the experience of not feeling wanted or special. Have you ever been in a situation like this? You know, I think at that time, I couldn't deal with the situation properly, the right way, or maybe I thought that I wasn't good enough. Around eight years old, I started to have pretty bad asthma episodes, and that means it was really hard to breathe. Have I told you that my dad is a doctor in Brazil? And one of the best. Well, my dad didn't want me to just rely or depend on strong medications. So he found a very clever idea to treat the problem. Swimming lessons. And that's when my love for sports started. I was a little shy in the beginning. After all, was a new place, new people, new activity. I really thought that swimming would be an individual activity or that would not be a teamwork. That way, I would do my thing and everybody else would do theirs. The teacher was really nice and made us feel comfortable. And I can tell that he was working with something that he really loved. The classmates were younger and older than me. I thought that was nice. Because that way, 
I could help someone younger and also learn from someone older than me. I was so surprised to find out that the older students were learning something new just like me. Everybody was on the same level. It was so special when my little brother joined me on swimming classes. A beautiful journey together. During the breaks, we would chat and get to know each other. I was so happy to find out that some of my classmates lived in my neighborhood and some of them were going to my school. It was so nice to see everyone outside swimming classes. It really felt like a community. And according to Oxford Languages, community is a group of people living in the same place or having something in common, in my case, swimming classes. I was taking classes three times a week, but in between classes, I asked my parents to take me to the pool so I could practice more. Can you believe that at some point I was doing so much better than the kids older and taller than me? I'm not going to lie. That was so nice. You want to know something amazing? Swimming classes didn't improve, help, just my health. It gave me good friends and most importantly, confidence. The confidence came with my effort to learn and to be better and also with the good friendship. I was in swimming classes for about seven years. That's a pretty good foundation. Then, on my teenage years at school, I tried soccer, volleyball, and ballet. And I know ballet is not a sport, but believe me, It's pretty intense. I really liked ballet and volleyball. I thought ballet was so beautiful and so fancy. Volleyball was all about my friends that were already on the team. And I wasn't very excited about soccer. My mom was so thrilled about ballet that on that same day we went shopping. Because I loved to dance, I knew in my heart that I would love ballet classes. The classes would be right after school, but I would have enough time for a snack and change. I really enjoyed the classes. The teacher was nice and I had so much fun, despite some girls full of themselves. You know, the kind of people that act like they know everything, they are so fearless or brave, and they feel like they are special, better than everybody else. And you know what's funny about it? Most of the time, somebody like that is very insecure, not sure about themselves. So in every single class, I did my best. And by the end of the class, I was mentally exhausted. But I would not let those girls tell me that I wasn't good enough. And you know what happened with time? The joy was gone. I was not getting along with some girls And it wasn't about ballet anymore. It was just about competition and not a healthy one. Hey you, a piece of advice. Don't lose yourself during the process. I did that. Because at that point, it wasn't about ballet and learning and having fun. 
it was just about proving myself to some girls that I shouldn't care about. If I only remembered the reason why I started. So I needed to make a decision. Should I stay and not focus on the girls? Or should I try something different? And guess what? I decided to try soccer. Now, I need to tell you something. The uniforms were not fancy. The teacher wasn't very nice. But you know what? I had so much fun and I was so good at soccer. I wasn't the best player ever. But that's not the point. The point is, I was so skeptical, unsure that soccer would be a good idea for me. And I was so happy I was wrong. Now tell me, have you ever been so happy for being wrong? It felt so good being part of a team where everybody made me feel welcome. And I was having so much fun doing something that I never thought that I would like. What a journey. First was swimming, then karate, ballet, soccer, and finally, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I am so grateful for my parents and the opportunities they had given me. I have learned so much about myself and the ones around me in every single experience, every single class. It's so amazing to think that I still have the skills that I've learned many, many years ago. For instance, my good posture, thanks to ballet, lower body strength, my legs, thanks to soccer, the improvement on my lungs, thanks to swimming classes. But you want to know where my heart is? Martial arts. I think there's something to do with protecting myself and others. So I started with karate and then I fell in love with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I always heard great things about Jiu-Jitsu. But back then in Brazil, it was so interesting to see that there were not a lot of girls or women taking the classes. Thank God it wasn't hard to find a friend, a girl, who was willing to take the classes with me. Thank you, lovely Rita. Oh, we had so much fun, even though we were the only girls in the class. When I came to the U.S., I knew in my heart that I needed to find a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school. And it's so important that you find the right school. The one that's going to teach you Jiu-Jitsu by keeping you safe. And the one that's going to make you feel welcome, like a family. One of the best things about Jiu-Jitsu, in my opinion, is that it's not about strength, but technique. And that means that a little one can nicely take down a tall one. How cool is that? Jiu-Jitsu made me feel so big and strong. I got so much confidence 
on myself. I was even walking differently, you know, with a good posture and a head up high. But it wasn't the kind of walk that I was feeling full of myself. No, it was the kind that you know in your heart. I got this. I'm not afraid of anything because I know how to protect myself. And while learning jiu-jitsu, I also learned about my strength. I learned that even though I'm small, I can take down a pretty tall guy or woman. In my small hands, in jiu-jitsu, a pretty handy. And that means that I can easily choke people because they cannot see that coming. You can never be bored in jiu-jitsu classes because it's like a chess game. You can have your game on your head, but it depends on the opponent, whoever is sparring or training with you. It's so exciting. Even though jiu-jitsu is my favorite martial art ever, I still have pretty amazing martial arts on my list. I really want to try Krav Maga. It was developed by the Israeli Defense Force. It focuses on hand-to-hand -hand combat with grappling, wrestling, and hand strikes. I also want to try Aikido. It uses less hand strikes and more turning motions and pushing movements along with joint locks. Pretty amazing, right? And I definitely want to try capoeira. Did you know that this is a Brazilian martial art that was developed by the slaves that came from Africa? The self-defense movement looks like a dance. It's so beautiful and so powerful. And that's how they would practice without being noticed by the horrible people that mistreated them. The world of sports, it's so fascinating. There are so many options to choose from, so you can find joy and happiness by exercising, making new friends, and learning how to protect yourself. Reflection of the day. You can close your eyes, or maybe not. You can even do a little dance. Do whatever makes you comfortable. You know, when I was younger, being the last one picked for teams was something that really bothered me. It made me sad and sometimes angry. Then, I got mixed emotions that let me think that I didn't like sports. The kids made me feel sad and unwanted. And to be honest, back then, I didn't do much to change that. Because not trying to play it anyway or trying to learn a new activity. I was just staying the same and nothing was changing. Big lesson here, you cannot try to change things by just accepting and not doing much to make a change. Focus on changing yourself, not others. When we change ourselves, everything around us changes as well. And how do you do that? By challenging yourself. Don't be afraid to learn new things and learning from your mistakes. It's so wonderful to create your own story and mostly recreate yourself. Redo, try again. It's okay to change your mind and start over 
and over again. Oh, there's a lot of beauty on new beginnings. And you know what? Just the brave ones have the gut and the courage to try again and to start over. And you? You are a brave one. Believe me, I know in my heart. We can change the past. Yesterday, what happened? But we can surely change tomorrow, our future, from now on. Remember, you can contact me by email at bugmenot.podcast at gmail.com or our Instagram account bugmenot.podcast In talking about Instagram account, have you seen Ava's Three Little Birds? They are the cutest thing ever! We made a special video for you guys. I hope you like it. On the next episode, we're going to talk about empathy. What is empathy? Why it is important? Empathy towards others, our planet, and nature. Thank you so much for listening. I am so grateful for you. Be the most beautiful you. You are so loved. I'll see you soon. <laughs>